In this segment, I'm going to talk about how a Bayesian makes a binary decision. That's another way of saying, how do we make decisions at our receiver that reduce the probability of error the best way that they can? We talked about how a receiver measures something, it runs it through a match filter. After that match filter, it gets some measurements. Those measurements go into a decision block, and the decision block makes an estimate of which symbol was sent. It would be a number from 0 to m minus 1. And that decision is made based on the data, based on this vector x that exists in our signal space. And well, how do we decide what region we should use to decide each symbol, each of these m minus 1 symbols? And for this video, we're going to start with m equals 2, and we're going to talk about making this binary decision. And we're going to talk about how do we make that in an optimal way that reduces the probability of error. In an area called decision theory, we're going to choose between different hypotheses about what happened. In this area, we have our hypotheses labeled with the capital H. And for this case, because we're talking about a binary decision, we're going to talk about two hypotheses. H0, that the transmitter sent a symbol 0 and h1 that the transmitter sent bit 1. Symbol 0, bit 0, it's the same thing because a symbol is one bit when we only have two symbols. And our job at the receiver then is going to be decide which one of these two hypotheses are true. And we're going to have what we call a decision region. R0 is the region of x for which we decide h0 and R1 is the region for which we decide H1. Two rules about our decision rules. First, there's no overlap. We're either going to decide R0 or R1, not both at the same time. And secondly, there's no being indecisive. We're always going to make a decision. So R0 union R1 is equal to the entire sample space. In our last segment, we talked about using the law of total probability to write a formula for the probability of error, because H0 and H1 form a partition of our space. Either H0 happened or H1 happened. Our receiver doesn't send blanks, and it doesn't send both at the same time. We can divide up our total probability of error by saying we can have this type of error, where H0 is true, but our receiver decides that symbol 1 was sent. Or another type of error is that our transmitter sends symbol 1 and our receiver makes an error and thus receives symbol 0. In terms of our decision region, we can write it like this. So I'm going to rewrite this because I can take this probability, and I can write it as 1 minus the probability that x is in region 0. x in R1 and x in R0 are complementary, so I can write it like this, and that allows me to write this as a sum of the probability of h0 plus two different terms here. I can write the probability that x is in region 0 as an integral over uh, the area in which x is in R0. And I can integrate this uh, product of the PDF of x given h1 multiplied by this probability of h1. And then the other probability of x in region 0, I can do the same thing except it is the PDF of x given h0, the, the first hypothesis that symbol 0 was sent. And so now I have one integral. It's over this uh, difference between these two um, kind of joint probabilities, the probability of x given h1 multiplied by the probability of h1 times the probability density function of x given h0 multiplied by the probability of h0, again, integrated over the area r0. We want to minimize this probability of error. And the only choice that we have here is this R0. We can only choose what R0 is. 
we can make a choice about where, what values of x we want to integrate. And I should note here that um, x is still a vector, so I should be writing it as a vector like this. And this might be a double integral or triple integral, depending on the uh, dimension of the vector x. But in any case, I have an integral over a region of that value of the vector x. How would we choose this in order to minimize the error? As a first step, I'm going to do an example. What does this integrand look like for k equals 1? That is, there's only one basis function, phi 0, and thus x is not a vector. It is a scalar. And I'm going to talk about the case when our noise is Gaussian, additive Gaussian noise. So our value of x is either equal to a0 plus some noise, or x is equal to a1 plus noise. This would be for the h0 case, and this would be for the h1 case, if symbol 0 was sent or symbol 1 was sent. And the noise, w, is Gaussian with some variance, sigma squared and 0 mean. So the first thing I'm going to show are the probability density functions. This would be f of x given h0, and this would be f of x given h1. This is for the example where I haven't stated this yet, but I have a symbol 0, which would send a voltage of minus 1, and a symbol 1, which would send a voltage of plus 1. These are what the probability density functions would look like for this case. Um, these are these functions right here. Okay, now I'm going to plot the joint probability densities, that is, f of x given h0 multiplied by the probability of h0. And this would be the density function for f of x given h1 multiplied by the probability of h1. Probability of h0, in this example, I wrote in as 0.75, 75% chance, and the probability of h1 is the remainder, 0.25%. So these symbols are not equally likely, and that's why they have different heights in this picture. Okay, And again, these are these joint probability density functions here. Well, what we're trying to do is decide where to integrate to minimize this probability of error. So let's look then at the overall, the difference between these two joint probability densities. Okay, so in this plot, I've got the difference of these two red and blue joint probability density functions. I'm looking at the integrand over some region R0 such that we minimize the probability of error. Okay, so how are we going to pick an area to minimize the probability of error? We have this integral. It has some area. Here's the zero axis, so we're either going to, whatever we integrate here, it's going to contribute positive or negative values to this integral. Well, the way to make that smaller is to integrate anywhere that the integrand is negative. That is this blue area here. Because if I integrate anything that is below zero, that's going to give me something that is more negative. And so if I'm trying to minimize this whole probability of error, the way that I'm going to choose R0 is I'm going to pick wherever this integrand is negative. That is that or that is the joint probability density function here when I plug in x into this PDF multiplied by the probability of h1 is less than this other joint probability density function. And I can rewrite this by dividing both sides by this probability density function and dividing both sides by this probability of h1. That is, if this is true, then I'm going to decide h0. And if the opposite is true, I'm going to decide h1. So this becomes our decision, our way to minimize the probability of error. We get a function of x on this side, and we get a constant on the other side that is dependent on what we know ahead of time about the probability of sending 0 and the probability of sending 1. And that's the way that we minimize this probability of error. So that is the way that a Bayesian 
A Bayesian is somebody who believes that we know ahead of time the probability of our two hypotheses. That's why our Bayesian decides whether H0 was sent or H1 was sent.